everybody. Welcome back. So this is um, take two of this pour. The first one that we did was gorgeous. It was beautiful. I put it on the drying rack because I had some leftover paint. And I was like, you know what? We're going to do some coasters together. And in my hurry, I didn't make sure it was level. And when I went back, the entire thing was tilted and run off. And, and I'm not happy about it. So... I ended up tilting it more to give it a different type of look. Um, and so we'll see what happens with that one. So we are going to try this again. Um, this is a 18 by 24 Artist Loft level one canvas. Um, it has been prepped with the Deco Art Americana Lamp Ebony Black. Our white is the Deco Art Americana Snow Titanium White. And our gold is the Outdoor Living Gold. The ratio is 4 to 1 to 1. Four parts pouring medium, which today is Floetrol. One part paint and one part water. Um, I have learned that that is probably the best um, ratio mixture to get the consistency that you're going to want. Which is a very, very fluid, um, thin watery type mixture. It's a lot thinner than like a tree ring pour and it's even thinner than a flip cup. You want it really watery. Um, so four parts of your pouring medium, one part paint, one part water is what works for me. Along with those deco art paints, I have actually added this PPG metallic tones. It is a silver based um, metallic paint. I got this at Home Depot. I will post a link down in the description if you want to buy it online. I add just a little bit to all of my colors. So our black here actually is a metallic black now. It has a beautiful metallic sheen to it. Um, and it's the same rule. You're going to add this, well, for, for Dutch pours, you're going to add the same amount of water that you add of the metallic tones. And you just add as much as you want till you get the color that you want. Um, and it's the same thing. This white has a good metallic sheen to it as well. So four parts pouring medium, one part paint to one part water. And um, again, this is an 18 by 24 level one artist loft canvas. And we are going to do the pour from here and go this direction. I do want the Dutch pour to go all the way to the top. So we're going to we're going to start and it's probably going to go to about right here and then we're going to come back and we're just going to walk this all the way to the top. Okay. So we are going to go ahead and get started. Oh, before we get started, I'll show you this painting. So this is the one that looked really, really great and then it got tilted. So then I tilted it even more to get this look. So I just had to tilt it a whole, whole bunch. And so that's the look we have now. Um, I don't know if I'll paint over it or not. It just depends on how it dries. But uh, so there's that one. And this is actually one that I did this morning that ended up being a double Dutch because I wouldn't stop messing with it. So it ended up being a double Dutch. And so that's that one. I um, haven't decided if I'm going to post the video on that one. Let me know if y'all want to see that one. And I will uh, post the video for it. But, uh, yeah. So, technically, this is the third time I'm doing it. Um, hopefully, I won't fiddle with it too much and have to tilt a lot and stuff. So, okay. Let's get to painting.
Okay, we are all done. We're going to leave it just like this. I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. Um, it is definitely not like the other one that I did, which I'm still kind of upset about. But um, that's the thing with, with this style of painting is, is you're never going to get the same result twice. So we will see how this dries. So thank you for watching. This is part one. Part two will be us putting it, um, putting our sealing coat and everything on it. And um, let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, that's it. So I'm going to bring you down for a closer look. Good morning everybody so we are back the painting is all dried um, I ended up not posting the part one and just making it a part one and part two I really wasn't sure how I felt about this painting so I posted it on a couple of the acrylic paint pouring sites that I am on on Facebook and um, everybody seemed to really like it so I I'm still unsure about it but I'm gonna go ahead and post the video um, you all can tell me what you think I've got a lot of uh, a different opinions so some think it looks like the sun, something looks like um, golden flames. Um, my best friend thinks it looks like um, good versus evil. And so um, so yeah, so just a lot of opinions and a lot of a lot of different takes on it. but we are gonna go ahead and get this sealed together. I have already taken it outside and sprayed it down very, very quickly, might I add, trying to beat the weather. <clears throat> um, and did the initial coat of Krylon Spray Lacquer that I always put on it. Um, this does a couple of things. It seals the painting really, really well. It actually brings back some of the glossiness and the shine. And if you didn't want to do polyacrylic, you could actually only do the Krylon Spray Lacquer a couple of coats. And um, and you would be fine and it, it would be fine. So, um, but I like the way the polyacrylic looks. But polyacrylic can have a weird reaction when it's put on acrylic paint, especially acrylic paint with Floetrol. And so um, this Krylon Spray Lacquer gives it a really, really good surface to adhere to. And it doesn't have that chemical reaction. And I don't get brush strokes and I don't get cracking and all of that kind of stuff. And I think one of the reasons that helps that is this Krylon Spray Lacquer. I get these at Lowe's. 
Um, you can actually get the quick dry stuff at Michael's if they have it in stock. But I also put a link down in the description where you can just order it on Amazon if you don't have either one of those stores in your town. Um, the other thing that I use that helps without cracking and without brush strokes is actually I use a All Paints and Stains, the Trilon Filament Soft Bristled Brush. I do not use foam. The only time I use foam is when I'm cleaning the sides, and I'll show you that as well. So this is a two and a half inch brush. I get these at Hobby Lobby. Um, my favorites are the oval sash. So as you can see, it has an oval because when I paint, I don't use the, the handle. I actually hold down here on the bottom and I like the way the oval fits in my hand. Um, again, I get these at Home Depot. And so again, I put links down in the description where you can order them on Amazon if you don't have a Home Depot in your town. But, um, but I like the way these have the polycrylic go on. So the polycrylic that we're using is Minwax water-based polycrylic, the clear gloss. Um, I get this at Lowe's. Again, link is down in the description if you don't have Lowe's. The secret to getting polycrylic really good um, coverage without any cracking is a lot of... Um, my mind just went blank. Uh, light. Wow. Wow. Um, thin coats. That's what I was looking for. Thin coats. A lot of thin coats. If you put it on really, really thick, you are going to get glazing and you are going to get cracking. But we are just going to do a whole bunch of thin coats and we will end up having a really good shine like this painting, um, but without all of the brush strokes and everything. So like I mentioned, I do use a foam brush. Let me grab a foam brush up here real quick. And what I use the foam brush for is after I put the polycrylic on, I actually go around the sides and smooth out the sides and get any drips. Polycrylic, even though it dries clear, if it dries thick, it will have kind of a, um, a milky look to it. And um, I always paint in the flow of the paint. So just kind of like wood grains, I kind of treat it the same way. So we are going to put our poly on this direction. Once I get the first layer on, I'll go around the sides and I'm actually going to pull all of the ends all the way in. What I'm doing is whenever the, the brush comes over the side, sometimes you are going to get holidays or open areas. And so by doing this pull, I'm actually making sure I get all that covered. And then I'll do uh, one more really light, light brushing where I barely put the brush on the canvas very, very lightly, and I just brush in one direction, okay? So those are all of the steps that we are going to do, but I kind of wanted to walk you through it um, because sometimes it's easier to have it explained and then watch it. So we are going to go ahead and get the first coat of polycrylic on.
Okay, that is the first coat. We are going to do a second coat together. Um, so we are going to let this dry probably about 45 minutes. And then we will be back to put our second coat on and wrap up this video. See y'all soon. Hi, everybody. We're back. The first coat is all dried. We are going to go ahead and put on our second coat. We are going to use the exact same technique that we did on the first coat. Um, I will probably put about two or three more coats on after this to give us a really good gloss and shine. But um, this will be our last coat together. So um, again, I'm going to use the exact same technique as I did the first time. All right, that is it. We're going to go ahead and leave it just like that and wrap up this video. Thank y'all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I will be posting this one on my website later on. Um, I'll post the, put the link down in the description. So also down in the description, all of the paint colors used as well as the mixture ratios and all of the materials that I use today, I'll have links down there so you can um, quickly find a way to purchase them yourselves. Also in the description, links to my Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, Facebook, as well as my website, guidedbyfaithdesigns.net. If you'd like to help sponsor my channel, I would greatly appreciate it. Link is down there as well. So again, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I hope everybody has a wonderful and blessed weekend. And as always, God bless.